Welcome back to the Mailin Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Shivery, coming to you live from the Lodge in Austin, Texas. Joining me is my co-host, Sally DeFries. What's up, Sal? It's cozy out. Yeah. I want to go home. I mean, I'm going to record this podcast, but then I'm going to go home. I'm going to get in pajamas. Mm. I'm going to eat the green chili chicken casserole that I have, and I'm going to watch a movie. I skipped my workout today because I was just too comfortable at home. I'm not working out. It's not like, you know what? Let's just not do it today. I've already walked 9,000 steps. I feel pretty good about it. That's pretty solid. That's pretty good. I feel fine. Yeah. I think uh, somebody else worked out, though. It is raining so hard that uh, the road, many roads getting here are actually closed down because they are low water crossings and the water is rushing over the road. And uh, it's just dangerous out there, folks. You know what I'm saying? We got Will on the board today. Not Dave. We got Will here. What's up? Yeah, what up? It's Mr. No Days Off. I worked out today, not to brag, not to boast. Okay. Okay, Will to fitness. What did you do? Did you do a pelly? Yeah. I did a little pelly ride today. Tossed on some... After playing so much Tony Hawk Pro Skater, I've decided to start putting on some old punk or ska albums that I used to listen to back in the day, back in high school. Have to say, the workouts are good. The workouts are good. I'm feeling pretty happy. <laughs> good for you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great. Man, I'm in such a sour mood about the the stuff that we just talked about before this, but I'm, I'm going to get through this. You got to just... <laughs> turn that frown upside down. Oh, man. Dude, dig in, man. The, uh, I feel like we have to give a general overview. Yeah, it's it's a bi- a billing uh, snafu. Not on, not on us. It just We've been in correspondence with someone who's uh, for a month now about some... A, some snafus. Some, some, some overdues. Some payments that aren't coming through. Dude, you got to embrace it, though. This is, yeah. this is one of those times when you can, like... Uh, it's like, all right, I know I'm in the, we, we know we're in the right. Yeah. So we just got to ride this out and, and prove to them that they're not as smart as us. <laughs> oh man. Good, good stuff. Good times. Um, wow. Where do we even go from there? There's not even anything to add to that. No. That's fine. Uh, I think that's just the end of the pod now. Yeah. Yeah. All it's right. Look, over. We have a hotline number. It is 888-362-MAIL. That's M-A-I-L. 888-362-6245. You can write in if you prefer. There's a link in the Twitter bio, and that's at Malin Podcast. I want to say thank you first. I we were a little bit short on questions. Actually, we weren't short on questions. We just had a lot that I think we either we've covered or they just weren't quite where I wanted them to be. I sent a tweet this morning from the at Malin Podcast account asking for questions, and I'm not kidding. I got like 40 responses within two hours. It was yeah. very very cool, and I have a surplus. Yeah, now. we have some random ones in here. Yeah, this week. I mean, I, I nothing wedding related at all. Yeah, I had a lot to choose from. Thanks to okay. everyone's response. So thank you for that. Again, all topics are on the table. We have seven questions today, three of which are voicemails. Well, let's jump right in if you don't mind, sir. All right, I've been warming up the vocal cords, going for a perfect game today. No stuttering, no missteps when it comes to reading these questions. You guys you ready? You can't call your shot. You put too much pressure on yourself. <sighs> Got to expect a lot. Can okay. I tell you something before we start? Yeah. Will did this on purpose. He's wearing a backwards hat on purpose. We're kind of in a fight. We got a little tiff on the way. He knows that I think he's super hot with a backwards hat on. (laughs) Why don't you do it more often? You're sitting here just like watching him. You know, like when you watch an athlete like do play their sport and you're like, God, that's so hot. That's how I feel right now watching a little podcast. I have to say, I did not wear that hat for that reason. Um, I got I just gotten done working out and my hair just dried. And I have to admit, my hair was a little wild. And I didn't feel like putting any product in it. I'm kind of low on my expensive products, so I decided, you know what? Let's go hat, hat will for a little bit. You're giving me like, uh, like backyard touch football on Thanksgiving. He, vibes right he now. looks That's, exactly like thank that. You. And <laughs> Dylan, it's real hot right <laughs> now. You. I'm thank simping. You. Like Sa- Sack's gonna come for that ass. Chandler, like, Chandler from Sack Friends is, vibes from the yes, from the Thanksgiving exactly, episode. Exactly, exactly. Sack is that, gonna lay him out look. though. If it's fall, that's the ultimate compliment you can get. If you yeah. look like you're in that episode, you're doing something right. Right. You guys ready for this first one? Yes. Yes. So I'm in the gym and it dawned on me, I hate working out. I've worked out since high school. I'm 24 now. And I know people use it for mental health or they like it, but I just did it to attract the opposite sex. I realized though, I work hard in the gym and I still get zero girls. So should I just (laughs) rather be happier being fat and still attracting nobody? (laughs) (laughs) This This is is all one sentence. Oh no, it's two sentences. A great and very self-aware question. I really like it. Um... (laughs) <laughs> well, I know you're excited to answer this one. You you talked about it before. We I feel recording. like we should just let him go. Yeah, first. I mean, jump in. 
What do you What do you think about this? Right, Workout well wants to. I spent a majority of my twenties living in Northern Michigan, where uh, you either knew everybody too well to get romantic with, uh, you knew everyone had a history with somebody, or you just no one tickled your fancy. Everyone kind of fell into these different pools, and I got to the point where I was just like, all right, like there's no one really around for me to date, and so one winter I just started working out. And that was with the intention of losing weight so I could have a better chance with some ladies. And I lost weight faster than I thought I would. And so like halfway through the winter, I started looking better, but there were still no ladies around. So I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I don't, I don't like paying for this overpriced gym membership. I don't like doing anything. So finally I just quit. And I was just like, you know what? It, like, I don't care anymore. Who am I doing this for? It doesn't <laughs> matter. Like I'm just going home at night and like doing absolutely nothing. I think it was at the time when I just decided to start writing Sunday Scaries. I tried to get my cloud up through the internet as opposed to actually being in shape. It, it worked. worked. Yeah. Get you now. Yeah, I, I can't really relate to the, I mean, the mental, <laughs> no, like the mental health part of it is huge for me. Like, it, it's a great way to blow off steam. It makes me self-confident. Um, all that stuff. I, I feel my best when I'm leaving the gym. Like, I do. But, you know, also, like, I want to look good, too. So. Yeah, I sometimes the mental health thing is what drives me recently that has not been the case but i feel like mental health like when i get on like a 21 day habit of it then that's when i really feel the benefits of that right but i work out because i don't want to be a beach ball like and it it's not that i'm trying to attract the opposite sex clearly it's more that like i don't want to buy new clothes and I am vapid and I want to look good, mostly for like other women, not even for guys at this point. Like, I just want to like wear cute All clothes and that. not be like fat, you yeah. know? Whole squad working out. I'm for women. just narcissistic enough to care, but like, I'm also, it's winter. If you were, it's COVID. I've kind of been losing steam here. Let's trade positions for a second. Let's say you're the single one. Mm hmm. Does working out, is it for a different reason at that point? Like to attract the opposite sex? I would say yes, but when I was single, I was fatter. I was fat. Yeah. It, it's part of it for me. I mean, obviously, I want to look as, as good as I can. I'm trying to look good naked, you know. Mm -hmm. I figure girls are into, you know, more in-shape guys than yeah. poorer-shaped guys. But oh, here's my question to this guy. It's like, is there any any physical activity you do that you actually like? Like, if you're despising every freaking second of it don't do it yeah luckily but i i enjoy it i think at this point i also being in medicine but just older in general realize like i've got to work out or i'm gonna be so unhealthy like a lot of it now is like for heart health that sounds like the most grandparent thing you can say but like i don't i hate feeling especially at work when i'm like running around like today i was like walking all over the place if i'm like winded like going up a flight of stairs, I'm like, this is embarrassing. Yeah. Like I'm 30. I got to figure it out. So that's a lot of my motivation too. Is there anything that this guy can do that's like not running on a treadmill and lifting weights at the gym? Like it, it sort of seems like he doesn't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. Like he just, he's strictly doing it to find somebody and that's not working. So like, what is he doing? I'm not telling him he's wrong. Like, right. You can, I don't think he do, cares much stop, about all that stuff, but I think he's probably lost the benefit, you know, like, when you are doing it all the time, you kind of forget like how good it feels if you haven't done it in a while. Like I think we're answering a question later. Like if you go on vacation, you haven't worked out. The first few workouts suck back from vacation, but then mm -hmm. like once you get that high again, you're like, oh, yeah. okay, this is why I'm doing. It. Yeah, if or I, this is why I'm not eating like shit anymore. If I have something on my schedule that prevents me from working out for like four or five days straight, I feel like shit. Yeah, you just I think you forget when you're in such a habit like. Or if same thing when you're eating well, when you eat like shit or you don't work out, then you just feel like shit. Although he's probably young enough that this doesn't affect him that much. But also like you say you're getting zero girls while you're looking physically fit. Are you are you trying? Are you putting yourself out there? Yeah. Are you reaching out to girls? Are you asking people out? Uh, maybe you just have a trash personality. I, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. But like why do you think you're getting zero girls? He wants to be fat bastard. And then I think he, he just thinks. wants to be fat and lonely as, as opposed to in shape and lonely. <laughs> what if he went full Timothy Chalamet and he just decided that? that he was just going to get as skinny as possible? Like go anorexic? No, not anorexic, but like, you know, just stop eating like shitty food and just wither away. Get rid of the gains. 
And then he gets a girl, and then for like Valentine's Day, maybe her birthday, maybe Christmas, he just gives her the gift of games. So he <laughs> he wins someone over with with just personality and his charisma and his and charm his, and, his, and his and his bag of bones like, and his barren, body. And barren like, frame. <laughs> Yeah. Guess what? You're about to get a beefcake on top of mm-hmm. all that. It's mm-hmm. going to take a few months to get there. That's a long ass play. <laughs> That's a long play. But I don't hate it. Okay. Actors do it for roles all the time, and roles are much smaller than the love of your life. So I don't know why you Will's do that for a woman. Will's giving me the gift of gains this Christmas. I'm not really gaining much, though. What that ass do, though? I'm kind of plateauing. Dude, well, my dude, leg. That, that here's your per. It's that September. Happens. My legs are rock hard right that now. That happens to everybody. I've it's never September, had stronger Will. legs than I have right now. You can st- all you have to do is get some weights up in our apartment. and You can give me the gift gains for Christmas. I've, I've been plateaued for the past five years. Like, Plateau's not a bad. I place look to just be. like I, I do, body wise. You're maintaining five years ago. You're in a maintenance but I'm, phase. Yes, but I'm not trying to maintain. Well, like I'm trying yeah, to like, get like leaner and. I can Why? complain about plateauing, but like my complaints about plateauing have nothing to do with my workouts. I mean, it, I mean they have everything to do with my workouts. I'm doing the exact same workout every single day, so all the muscles that I'm working out are probably as good as they're going to get right now. And I just, just need to start quads. hitting the trouble areas. And you start doing like you've talked about doing some weight weight stuff. Yeah, honestly, the reason I haven't started doing it's because the uh, the ball, the medicine ball that I have, is at my buddy's house. And like I just, I just don't feel like going over and getting it. Literally, not even half a mile away. I could get there in five minutes from our apartment. I just haven't done it yet. Well, COVID and stuff, man. I didn't want to pop in and be like, hey, can I get my medicine ball? Pop down to the apartment gym. And he might need to get another kind of medicine ball. Just throw some shit around. See what happens. Just go steal one from the apartment gym. Dude, the gym's not ready for me. Unless the gym has a screen that's just in front of me the entire time telling me my heart rate, I'm I'm not doing it. But apartment gyms are the best place for beginners because they're usually pretty empty. And there's no pressure from, like, other people watching you and that kind of – you can just feel it out, do your own thing, move at your own pace. It's a good environment. I'm scared to go to my apartment gym. I'm worried people are going to hate me now. (laughs) Oh, God. Okay. okay. All right. Let's move on. You know what? They don't hate those liquid IV. <laughs> How could you hate liquid IV? You already know about liquid IV because of their popular hydration drink mix. They've lo- just launched the newest line, the Energy Multiplier, with roughly 100 milligrams of clean caffeine. It's the perfect coffee replacement for an all natural alternative to processed energy drink that has sustained energy boost throughout the day. Guys, you know I love liquid IV. I drink at least one per day. At least. That's true. Do you? Can't yes. confirm. My, uh, so my stepdad, he lives at the ranch and he works, he works the ranch. He's like an actual like rancher. He's not just, he doesn't so just, he's like, w- yeah, have the title. Like he does it. He yeah. builds fence and he. So he's not just like me who buys, no, like, no. buys like fills and stuff and tries to act like a rancher. He works in the sun all day and he sweats mm-hmm. and they so know. So he's like a rip. That's a Yellowstone yes. reference. Okay. Yes. They know about Liquid IV because they listen to this podcast and they're like. I want to, my mom said, I want to try some, I want Blake to try some. That's my stepdad's name. He did, loves it so much. They asked me to bring him more down. And I did over this week, over the weekend, like three of those big bags of it. The dude's like hooked now. Dude. Swears by it. I tried to, so the other day I worked out and I knew I was severely dehydrated, but I was like, you know what? Like I hardly had any water today and I hopped on the bike and I started going and I drank an entire like jug of water by the end of it. Just today. I had the same situation pop up and I was like, you know what, Will, before you get on the bike, you don't want to finish your water halfway through your workout and have nothing. So I drank a liquid IV right before, hardly even touched my water through the workout and had a great one. I just love this stuff, guys. Passion fruit, acai. I'm a passion fruit guy. I'm I'm a lemon lime girl. I've been been, been just going lemon lime lately and I just have really been enjoying it. I feel like you're sleeping on passion fruit. I don't sleep on passion fruit. I still like it, but I just have a lot of lemon lime to go through. I I think I'm lacking on passion fruit because of that. But have Americans report that they struggle with daily fatigue, and some signs increase er, include decreased focus, lack of motivation, poor mood, and unhappiness. With Liquid IV Energy Multiplier, you can upgrade your vibe and reach your constant state of awesome. This stuff has premium matcha and green energy blends that taste delicious and pro- provide a long-lasting boost throughout the day. The boost you get from one to two cups of coffee, but without the crash. Think about that. It contains a mixture of matcha, guayasua, that has to be how you pronounce it. <laughs> that has to be how you pronounce it. And Did ginger, you even look that up before? <laughs> that's high in antioxidants and helps improve mood and focus. Liquid IV's cellular transport technology, as you guys all know, it's CTT. Duh. It delivers an optimal ratio of nutrients for more efficient uptake. This stuff is phenomenal. They're also on a mission to change the world. They've donated over 3.7 million servings in response to COVID-19, and the products are being donated to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military. People helping people. I love that. 
Liquid IV is available nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MAILIN at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you use promo code MAILIN at liquidiv.com. Start refueling your adventures today at liquidiv.com. Promo code MAILIN. Let's do a voicemail. First one. Bill and Sally, Dave, quick question. I recently moved in with my girlfriend, and she has sort of taken over the house aesthetic. Um, usually I don't really care about interior design or decorating, that sort of thing. Um, but how do I kind of bring this up in a way that doesn't make her feel bad about the way she's decorating, but lets her know that I want a little bit more of sort of my taste and my, uh, you know, my ideas incorporated into the house? Love you guys. Bye. Quick little side story. When um, my ex-wife and I, when we sold our house, I was like, hey, the furniture, do you just want to like split it like evenly or whatever? She goes, oh, you can just have all of it. I was like, what do you mean? She goes, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> I was like, and not, not in a mean way, but she just like never spoke up about like, yeah, this isn't really my style. Yeah. So um, I'm kind of like, I'm the opposite of what this guy is in this, in this situation. Um, you just overtook. had she, had she spoken up, I'd have been like, "Oh, let's let's find some stuff that's that's more uh, your vibe." I'm into it. Right. It was it was kind of funny. Did you pick everything out? Um, I I thought it was a kind of a, a mutual <laughs> effort, but well, I guess it was. Maybe your taste change. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, uh, you. I think this guy offers to go shopping together. Number one, I think he also probably needs to tell her. He's like, I mean, Will has no problem telling me he doesn't like stuff that I buy. And look, furniture and decorations are expensive. It's a long-term right. play here. So you you don't want to shell out hundreds, sometimes what thousands if, of dollars for stuff that you're not into. And you can't, yeah. What if, though, it's like not the furniture and she's like a big like live, laugh, love <laughs> <Yeah>. sign person? <laughs> what's, that, what's that style? Is it called shabby chic? Shabby chic. Okay. That was... So there's like I don't know. If, Ugh, shabby chic, I hate it. I don't. Like I don't it know either. if I hate it. this I don't like counts, it. but like the whole Chip and Joanna Gaines, like Pinterest, like it's just like all overdone. And I feel like I'm just assuming that that's what this girl's taste is. And it's fine if you like live with three sorority sisters, but it's not fine when you live with a member of the opposite sex. Yeah, you just got to speak up. You yeah. got to speak your mind and be like, look, if we're going to be living here together, I want to at least have some say into how we decorate the place. But meet her halfway. Don't don't try right. to, don't try to take over the whole operation. Be like, let's weigh in equally and then agree on on a way to decorate together. Right. Will That's and I have a pretty it. good compromise, I think. Don't you? I like y'all style. Yeah, totally. It's good. What? Dude, we got to get rid of that Longhorn photo. But. <laughs> I could, I could that's probably the, find a place for it. No, that's, that's the, when we move. I'm sorry, the mover's broke. Is that the the four hands one? No, 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 no it's no. from West Elm. Yeah, okay. it's from West Elm. It's, it's just a really generic photo of a Longhorn. Yeah, which is cool though. We live in Texas. Yeah, it's also in the most like I don't know. She's a Longhorn too. It's in the most viewable spot of our apartment. Yeah. No, it's well, fine. at one point you wanted to buy skateboards. Yeah. And then just <laughs> hang them up in our apartment. I was gonna bolt skateboards to the wall. I actually got approval for that. I Who just, out of respect, she, she, I didn't do it. Skateboards? I think you just tell her. Like, I'm pretty blunt about what I don't like if you, if you have it. Like, right. I have no issue saying, like, I hate that. And the, th but I, I don't like, I don't stop you from putting stuff in the apartment. But I think you and I have a pretty similar style. So we you don't put like to more worry stuff in the apartment than I do. Though so, I recently future. bought a, a new uh, vase. It's just boobs. It's, it's a, it's a boobs? boob vase. It's boobs. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's it's nude it boobs. I thought it was cool. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy this vase. That is and now I have to explain to everyone that my husband bought a boob vase and I had nothing to do with it. It's cool though, isn't Sounds it? Sounds pervy when you talk about it like is that. Is it like clearly boobs or is it kind of abstract? No, it's clearly boobs. Oh, it's clearly boobs, my friend. Okay. I'm into it. It sounds a lot trashier than it is. It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. not like the, the boob version of the... Uh, a Christmas story lamp. Yeah, it's not yeah. that. I just sent it to Randy. If Randy feels like to if you if you feels like tossing it on the screen, it might be difficult for him, so I won't make him do that. But okay. I thought it was a tasteful, nice vase, so I bought it, and uh, yeah, there's no nothing even in it. 
I know. That's the thing. So I want. Will wants to put. <laughs> Granny, put it on the screen. Will wants to put a cactus in it so that it looks like a penis coming out of boobs. Dude, why are you so pervy? At I home? don't know. For some reason, I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> I think dude, this is I, my dad's like my dad likes doing these little tiny, th tiny things that like kind of make my mom mad. And I think I'm kind of just starting to go in that direction. Like, I just want to mess with Sally and start like doing things. See in our what apartment. you can get away with. Exactly. The buttons a little bit. Yeah. I. Oh, you guys. I hate it. OK, I, there, there it is. Go. Oh, OK. <laughs> what? That is not what I was imagining. Yeah, dude, tan lines. But it's really like tiny imagining. titties instead of boobs. Yeah, like those those aren't OK. In his defense, those aren't like good. <laughs> those aren't <laughs> hot. It's yeah, not, it's not, not a like, good set. It's just boobs. It's just, uh, yeah. The, honestly, they kind of look like mine. Yeah. If I put on a women's bikini, look like a like, shave my chest. That is what my boobs would look like. Those are like chubby, uh, thirteen-year-old boy <laughs> boobs. Yeah, or thirty-three-year-old man boobs. Or thirty-three-year-old man. That's funny. Okay, yeah. we got off topic. I think this guy needs to tell this girl, and obviously in a nice way, but like even maybe say like, "Hey, what do you think about like just start." inserting your opinion part of the reason she might be taking over is because she probably assumes this guy doesn't care you know yeah it's not like she thinks his taste is trash she probably is just doing it because that's a traditional gender thing to do but like you know he could want a boob vase we don't know right just start uh, just have a conversation find some stuff online that you like and start sending it to her and see how she gauges that start response. a Pinterest board. Yes. No, Center don't start a Pinterest board. Kidding. What do you feel about this? Yeah, find something that you like need to invest in. If there's something that she's has not bought yet, or if something that needs replacing, or there's something that's in your, your apartment that's cheap that's easy to get rid of, just go find something online that you like and send it to her. And sorry, you might have to cover that. You might have to pay for it, but that's the price you have to pay if you want to actually choose what's in your apartment. Ninety percent of guys probably don't care. Mm hmm. Yeah. I used to work at a store where we sold a bunch of stuff and like anytime a guy came in, he just wouldn't say anything. And it's like, well, I don't think you care. So I'm going to talk to your wife this entire time. And a lot of people don't care. No Who cares. I care. I care, but I don't have enough confidence in my like interior decorating abilities to like weigh in too much. I'll be like, Hey, look, I like this, but if you don't, if you don't like it, I'm just going to, I'm going to let you have, you know, I, I just, I'm, I'm not good at it. You know what Sally told me one time? What? Sally told me that I have good taste, but I can't put a full room together. Okay. Stand by it. One thing I, I stand am, by that. One thing I am good at is hanging shit. See, I'll I'm getting better. Anything. I'm getting better Will's at hanging getting stuff. getting good at it. Will picks out one thing, but he can't bring the whole room together, you know? Can't okay. tie it in. Agree to disagree here? Will, you... You've been trying to like buy this massive ass chair for our living room that has no place in our living room for like three years. It's a badass chair and it's it's a piece that you make room for. You figure it out when you get it. <laughs> you have to get rid you of the You gotta couch. figure it out. Okay. It's a you don't need the piece. air. It's all the our one. laundry. What exactly does the nitro thingy do to the coffee? I wanna up my coffee game. Do you make a normal pot of coffee, then add nitro to it? And it gets frothy or something? Sounds tight. Um, if you don't know what this person is referring to, go to my Instagram page at D Shivery. Uh, yeah, I recently got a, a nitro press, which is a nitrogen infuser. And um, I actually just I tried it for the first time about an hour ago. How'd it go? And I am wired. It is lit. It is legit. It tastes very good. It's very strong. Um, but yet, it's for cold brew. Okay. It's not for hot coffee. I don't think you can do hot coffee. I mean, I'm sure you can, but no, I, don't know. Probably don't. I don't know what it would taste like. Yeah, it's for cold brew. I, I, I made some cold brew, which is very easy to make if you've never, if you've never done it. I made some cold brew, and I, I poured it in this thing, and uh, I screwed in the little nitrogen uh, cartridge, mm -hmm. and boom. It is awesome. I think that is a great move for cold brew. I think if you want frothy hot coffee, honestly... I think it was Brett who said this. You just get one of those $12 handheld frothers on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You heat up milk separately or whatever, you know, cream, whatever you're going to use. Or you can not heat it up. I like to not heat up milk 
and then pour it into hot coffee so then it's like the perfect temperature of what I want it to be instead of like steaming the milk. But okay. you can get things that like steam and froth the milk so you just like put it in and it like steams it. Huh. They're a little more expensive than just a handheld frother. Um, and you just use that thing, froth it right up, then you pour in the milk. You got a nice frothy latte. It's like making like a, a, a cappuccino kind of. Or cappuccino or a yeah. latte. Okay. But I mean, that's how you want to do it if yeah. it's hot. And it's cheap as hell. I mean, it's like $12. If you've never had nitro cold brew, which is what I make, which is what I'm making now at home, mm -hmm. try it. Find a place that has it on tap. Give it a shot. It is, it's strong. So if you're a, a coffee novice, it might be too much for you. I don't like cold brew. That's fine. That's fine. I I, I'll, I'll drink it sometimes, but it makes me feel like shit. I don't know why. Oh, man, I love it. Like, I just, I like, I think I like hot coffee better right now, but I'm a big iced coffee fan sometimes, yeah. usually in the winter Cold for brew, some reason. It, it it seems stronger to me, and also it's not acidic like hot coffee is, uh -huh. which is a little added bonus to it. And it, yeah. just tastes, it just tastes really good. But nitro cold brew obviously is just cold brew with nitrogen gas in it. And, right. And, man, it's awesome. Okay. So check it out. It, that it might be. Look, this thing. The thing that I have, I I got talked into buying it. It's not cheap. There are probably better options out there as far as like being cost effective. Um, but the one I got is a, the brand is Hatfields and it's a nitro press, and it's dope. Anyway. Cool. Yeah, that's that. Let's go to the next one. I was just googling how much this was just so I could know. I'm not going to out you on the podcast if people are going to do that themselves. Not cheap. Yeah, not cheap. Not cheap. All right, this next one, you guys ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're stuck on an island and can only bring three beverages to drink until you're found. If ever. What do you pick? For the sake of the discussion, <laughs> can we assume that if you're bringing coffee, it can be hot? If you bring in beer, it can be cold? Or are you just bringing like I'm assuming a crate you full of get three beverages and it's – to be enjoyed how it should be enjoyed. Okay. My num my number one draft pick is coffee. I drink mm -hmm. coffee every day. Mm -hmm. If I don't have it, I feel like my day is just not right. I have to have coffee. It gets me going. I love it. I'm drinking it every day. Okay. That's my number one draft pick. Nitro coffee? Nitro cold brew? Um, probably just hot coffee. If it's an everyday thing, it's probably just hot coffee. Okay. I'm just imagining how cocky it is to be stranded on an island and Dylan's just got his nitro <laughs> thing just like <laughs> gassing it. Yeah. Like, like who is oh, this? Oh shit, guy? I need more nitro <laughs> cartridges. A lot of cartridges. You could do whippets though. Yeah, yeah. you could do whippets. Oh yeah, another thing. I swear when I first put that on my Instagram story, people thought you were doing whippets. 75 plus comments. Wow. I'm not even kidding. People saying like, "Oh, so you're doing whippets now." I didn't know that like that was a whippet looking apparatus i don't know how to do whippets never done them so no it's not why i got that and apparently it's a different gas altogether that you're taking in anyway coffee mm -hmm. i mean water i think is probably a smart one here right mm -hmm. chilled water mm -hmm. and then uh probably like a, a nice uh cab nice cabernet really yeah so you're just gonna get drunk on cab the entire time I mean, yeah, I can handle. Okay, I can handle. Like the hangover for me from drinking wine is it's almost flatline. I, it doesn't affect me at all the next day, um, and it's like a it's like a, a warm kind of a buzz. I, I I like the feeling of wine, and I love the taste of wine. It's a great it's a great drink. So there it is: coffee, water, wine. Is it my turn? You're the co-host, so yes. Okay. My question was like, does water is water included? But if it's not, that's an obvious must. Right. Like, I'm not gonna not have water. Uh, I also went with red wine as my alcoholic drink of choice because having like one liquor for the rest of my life just sounds terrible. Like, part of me wanted to just be like really embrace it that I was on an island and just go full pina coladas the whole time, <laughs> but. I would be dying like day two. So I'm going red wine. And uh, my third drink would be an Arnold Palmer. Not yeah. bad. Really? Not yeah. bad. Arnold Palmer. I Like I go through these stages where like all I want is an Arnold Palmer. You could caffeinate that tea too. And I am constantly, I'm in a stage right now, basically like when we started going, when we went to Michigan and from here on, like if I'm not 
having a drink, I'm having an Arnold Palmer. Because it just sounds delightful. It's refreshing. Yeah. A lot of sugar from that lemonade, but if you're on an island, who gives a shit, right? Who cares? Just, just go, go you're off. You're probably burning it off because you're trying to yeah. spear fish for your food or I like, whatever. I like the guy in the first question. Like, why am I even working out? Exactly. Yeah. Who's this for? Exactly. Yeah. All right, Will, what do you got? I'm going to start off just water with liquid IV in it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Smart. That's mm-hmm. a smart play. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My next one, uh, I could probably figure out a way to make it using water on the island. But it might be difficult because I don't know what kind of acerola they have on the island. But Vizzy's the next one. And Vizzy, then Vizzy, after Vizzy. just a long day of spearfishing, I just want to sit down <laughs> sit down on a on a hammock that I made out of some straw leaves and just have a nice, nice cold Miller High Life. Okay. <laughs> well, you're a company man. I love that. I thought you were going to go with Scottish breakfast tea. and <laughs> That would be. Well, my original reaction was like, all right, I need to use up two of these spots for pina coladas because I need one for each hand. <laughs> But then I wasn't really sure where to go from there. Then I was like, well, then I only have water. So I knew I had to choose something else. I need the variety. Can you imagine drinking rum every day? I would, I would die. <laughs> it sounds terrible. It's truly it's awful. Too much. What if, like, what if someone just came in really hot? Like, what if Randy's over there being like vodka soda? Like, that's his, like, yeah. you desert can't, you island You can't do drink. liquor. You can't have, like. No. Yeah, you can't do liquor in this situation. Absolutely it's not. Too, it's just too heavy. I'm not a fucking pirate. Like, I'm it not going to do rum. <laughs> It's disgusting. too hard. I don't know, man. Mixing up like coconut martinis and Why stuff. Why do pirates love rum so much? Because. Because it, it. The, it's the islandy stuff. I don't know. It is very islandy. Rum is great. I, I do love rum. If I'm on an island, I want to be drinking rum and probably nothing else. Yeah, that's if I'm true. I'm going to the Caribbean. I'm not ordering a margarita, okay? I'm having a rum drink. Doesn't matter what kind. But rum day in, day out, that's just a lot. It's too much. That's a that, surefire that's way to come why. back from vacation not being able to fit in your pants. If I'm on the island for one night, then maybe maybe rum's the answer. I'll just get I'll just get ripped on some uh some Myers dark rum. Just die on some rum? Yeah. But yeah. if I'm there for the long haul, I'm gonna do wine just to, to mellow out a little bit. Enjoy myself. I'm just choosing a can of gasoline and just ending it. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to do it. Speaking of sun, you guys hear about these sun baskets? Yes. They're yes. so fresh, and they taste great, and they're good for you, too. Also, with zero effort. Well, not zero effort, but pretty much minimal effort. Yeah. It's wonderful. <laughs> sun Basket delivers fresh and ready meals that are fast, fresh, and delicious. They heat up in just minutes. It's so easy, guys. You want to skip the grocery store? Eat delicious, healthy food without having to go out. Get Sun Basket fresh and ready meals delivered to you each week. Sun Basket delivers their fresh and ready meals Made with organic, fresh produce, sustainable seafood, and meats that are free of antibiotics, hormones, and steroids. Their chefs have won Michelin Awards and a James Beard Award, even. You guys familiar with James Beard? Mm Mm-hmm. Big time. (laughs) So take the night off and let them cook for you. Their meals are amazing. They got papadele. Sal, you ordered that the other night at a restaurant. I did. You know where it's probably cheaper? Sun Basket. Sun Basket. Wilted spinach, sweet peas, and fresh ricotta on that thing. Mm. Southwestern turkey and sweet potato skillet. Sign me up. Cauliflower macaroni and cheese. <laughs> yeah. Meals come freshly prepared and heat up in as little as six minutes. They're ready to heat and eat, which means no mess in your kitchen. They even have paleo, vegetarian, Mediterranean, Dylan, and gluten-free options too. They sent me uh, some salmon tacos with cabbage slaw. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Uh, also, a southwestern turkey and sweet potato skillet. Wow. Tasty. It, it is as good as it sounds, folks. You know, we got... Tell me. Korean barbecue chicken lettuce cups. What? Steaks with chimichurri and harissa roasted sweet potatoes. You got steak? And cauliflower mac and cheese. Right. Yeah, I think Brett heard me coming from uh, from behind him. He heard the footsteps because last time he ordered Dave all the steak, and I was sitting there like, dude, what? I want some steak. <laughs> Finally got it. Right now, Sunbasket is offering $35 off your order. When you go right now to sunbasket.com slash Randy and enter promo code Randy at checkout, that's sunbasket.com slash Randy, enter promo code Randy at checkout. For $35 off your order, sunbasket.com slash Randy. Enter promo code Randy. You guys ready for this next voicemail? Let's jump right in. I feel like this might get things a little fuego in here. Hey, guys. This is Jim in Houston. Wanted to know what you think is the most overrated movie or TV show that you have ever seen. Like, I think that Fight Club is absolute garbage. Thanks. Bye. 
I don't hate his Fight Club take. I agree with his um, Fight Club take. I've actually. seen the movie, and it is good, and it's very thought-provoking, all that stuff, but it people are just obsessed with the I've movie. seen it, it and I, cult following. I don't want to rewatch it. Like, yeah, I don't either. I, like, I know what once, happens. Once is enough. I'm good. It is. It's good. I'm. I'm not trying to take too much away. No, from I'm it, not. I agree. It's a it's good movie. Overhyped. It is overhyped. Yeah. Um. What are your thoughts on Seinfeld? It's my favorite sitcom of all time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm a big Larry David, Jerry Seinfeld guy. I just okay. am. Um. And that's. Yeah. I. I literally. <laughs> you're gonna shit on it. That's okay. I'm not gonna shit on people, it. People. People don't like Seinfeld. I think. And that's okay. I think a general consensus from. Some people is that it's overrated. Given given like the modern day offering of TV shows, Seinfeld when put up against some of the current ones, it it it's like what? I don't I don't really get it because it was um, it was like a pioneering show. Mm-hmm. It was like the first like. It wasn't the first sitcom of its of that kind, but it was it it was a trail. It, it was just it's a great show. Here's the, my hu- the humor like the like the everyday person humor in it. Yeah. I think is really, really strong. I really like Larry David a lot. I love Curb. I think my issue with Seinfeld, and it's not like I don't take issue with the show, it's that I will watch an episode if it's on and there's not like The Office on, Mm -hmm. but only because I've seen more episodes of The Office, like they're more rewatchable to me. I think I would have a bigger connection with Seinfeld if I started from the beginning and watched it all the way through. Yeah. If you put an episode of Seinfeld back to back against an episode of The Office, Nine out of ten people are going to say The Office is a better show, and I don't really have a problem with that because they're so different. But the time period that right. the Seinfeld was released, and it, it they did it for years and years and years. To me, it's the goat sitcom. I, I think for me, the Seinfeld thing, like people saying it's overrated, I don't have an opinion. What I'm saying, the only reason I brought it up is like I, I don't have enough of an opinion to like love it. Yeah unconditionally or hate it and i think part of that is like me not having seen enough of it whereas the office like i love that show because it's so familiar to i me. love the office you know what i'm too. saying yeah. like same with friends it's like is it objectively a good show yes but part of the reason like i will rewatch that again and again is because i am comfortable with it yeah. whereas seinfeld like maybe i don't understand some of the bits as much because yeah. i never watched it like george costanza in my opinion is the greatest sitcom character of all time it's just it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, um, here's my most overrated sitcom of all time, and it, it's kind of a popular show to shit on these days. So I feel kind of cheap saying it, but Friends to me. I I t- wholeheartedly disagree with this. I have a theory that if Friends didn't have a laugh track, it wouldn't even be a comedy. Like no one would laugh at anything in the show at all. Kind of like that theory. That that's an interesting theory. Here's what I will say about Friends to defend Friends, because I think this is the same side of the coin like i think the people who feel this way about friends there are people who feel the same way about seinfeld you know what i'm saying similar shows in format right they're they're nothing like the humor is nothing alike like obviously friends is a lot more like obvious comedy you're like taking all your comedic stuff from like chandler being funny to joey being dumb and phoebe being weird yeah honestly i think it took me being older and understanding the jokes to actually appreciate friends more, which is why now, like if you ask me when I was in middle school and high school, like middle school, and I think it ended maybe my freshman year of high school, my favorite characters by far were Rachel and Chandler. Mm -hmm. But now I'm, my favorite character is Ross because of the shit he does. And Monica, like I feel like they're more relatable, but like, again, I have a hard time shitting on these shows because I think all these sitcoms are super personal to people. Like you have the memories you have from like watching it growing yeah. up, you know? Yeah. My, my parents used to let me stay up late just to watch Seinfeld. And then right when it was over, I think it ended at 10. I think it came out at 930. Mm-hmm. They're like, all right, time for bed. And I would go immediately to bed. Like that was like my routine every week. It was crazy. I, I'm not saying that the show is overrated. I just have questions. Like, do you, did you ever watch The Simpsons? I gave Simpsons a shot. Uh-huh. It it never um good it, to me it is overrated. I I don't really understand why it was so popular. Yeah. I don't. I have a hard time getting into cartoons, I think. I have no Simpsons take cuz I've not watched enough to actually know. I do have a cartoon take that I think is overrated and I think it 
I just I just have never found it nearly as funny as everyone else does. And it's it South Family Park. Guy? Oh. South Park. I actually th- thought Family Guy was very, very, very funny for a very long time. Okay. And I liked it. Uh, South Park South does not Park make sense to me. To me I just like it's so out there sometimes where I'm like, oh, you lost me. You lost me. There are some there are some funny South Park episodes. I, I think it's I, I think that it is funny, but I think it's overrated. Yeah. I do I am amazed by the stuff that uh Trey and Randy, you know the answer to this. Trey and Matt Stone come up with. I do think that they are very smart, very funny people. It's just not for me. And I understand, like, I've lived with people who love it, and they, they think it's great, and that's awesome. But for me, I just think it's a little more overrated than people give it. Yeah, I would I would rank uh, Family Guy, South Park, Simpsons in that order. Simpsons did nothing for me. Just talking cartoons the, Have you watched the Kid Rock episode? Of what? The Simpsons. No. Okay, Pretty here's good. another thing that I think is really overrated, because I, I don't have anything specific that I really want to call out, but I'm over people doing reboots. Like... Do we really need to like watch some actors and they're past their prime, like try to remake characters from twenty years Which ago? Which one are you thinking of right now? Uh, Full House. Oh, I didn't even give that. Leave that. I didn't shot. even watch it, but yeah. I I thought of this because they're gonna make a reboot of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but I don't know if they're like putting Will Smith in it or what's happening. I'm like, the reason these shows were so good, like I think nostalgic wise, like we would love to have a Friends or a Seinfeld reboot but at the same time you're like that was funny in the time that it was because of what it was like now curb works so well because those characters come in and you get to like see you know what's his fit uh jason who plays george costanza jason alexander yeah you get to like see him as a real person or yeah. whatever i just think yeah true I- I'm i'm over the reboots like Worst one by far was probably Will and Grace, which I loved Will oh, and Grace as a bad. show. And then they brought it back in 2018. And like everyone's sorry, too old. And they still have a laugh track. It's like that just show embarrassing. Was better without HD. Especially yeah. They're, they look, they just look so old now. It's like weird. Uh, I got one for you. Okay. And this one, I, I, this one is a very popular TV show. It's won tons of awards. I don't, I, simply don't understand why people can stomach even a f- one full episode um big bang theory uh i do, do not I. get it i do not get this it is, it's the cbs bubble man I do it's just not, a bunch of old people i, it's, I don't it's know middle america my, my mom and dad love it. Uh, it it is it's the midwest where they're getting all these viewers of people who, who watch that i i do not understand the people who write for that show all say the same thing when someone shits on it they say oh well, the humor's too smart for you no, you're a dumbass because just because they talk about like nerdy science shit doesn't mean the humor is like very above like, my intellectually, yeah. you know, superior. It's it's actually pretty stupid comedy. They're just talking about smart people's shit. It's objectively I, a bad show. I say I <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same Be careful, way. Sally. My mom loves. I show. feel the same way <laughs> she, about two listener. and a half men. I feel I pretty. You could show me the entire CBS lineup. And I would shit on every single show on there except for Love Island. Dude, so don't don't poo poo Two and a Half Men. There were some there were some gems in that show. There are some great episodes of Two and a Half Men. Okay, let me just put. Do you put have it any there. overrated movies? I, I, I'm I surprised. Will do. I got a absolute snooze fest of one. It's called The Godfather. <laughs> Dude, why didn't you back me up when I was talking about how it wasn't like? Because I'm afraid of Dave. Okay. <laughs> Dude, the guy, like, I've so I've tried watching the first one numerous times. He I probably fall won't listen to this. Every time. I fall asleep every time, and I just don't care. Okay, it is a good movie. Overrated, though. But it is. It, there's not, not a whole lot happens in the movie. No. I'm like, dude, like, I mean, I like American Gangster with Denzel a million times more. Well, see, this I is like waiting, the Fight Club tight. thing. I keep waiting for shit to pop off in The Godfather, and it just never does. This like, is oh, like okay. the Fight Club thing. It's like people pick a movie, and they go, like, full torque for it, and they, they like, can't – because it, because it's like those the critics gang- liked it's it. It's OG gangster movie. And so then people are like, oh, well, yeah. like, it's embarrassing that you would like a different gangster movie. And you're like – you yeah. know what? I'm gonna watch the fucking Italian job, and I'm gonna love it. Goodfellas okay? is better than Godfather. I just think yes. people get too snooty about movies. Goodfellas is way better than Godfather. The characters Facts. are so strong. Wild ass shit happens. Um, the Godfather, nothing, nothing crazy happens. It's just like I have to pause really fast. I did say I love, I want to watch the Italian job. I'm not trying to say that that's a gangster movie. I just say that's like one of my like, what is it? Um, 
your like guilty pleasures, like the Italian job, Ocean's Eleven, like Shooter, all are movies that like I will stop anything I'm doing if they're on TV and watch the entire movie. Yeah. Shooter is actually a bad movie, but I fucking love Shooter, it. Shooter, I like Shooter. Like, I love it. I like that. Just how I feel about National Treasure, okay? Like, people just gotta. You know, I've never seen that. What? Yeah, I've never seen National stop Treasure. Stop it. Dude, it's so entertaining. It's so entertaining. If you like any history, and none of this is true history. <laughs> I was say, what? None of it's true. But it, like, makes you feel like when you're, like, taking American history again, you're like, hell yeah. Like Nick, Nick Cage is such a. He's so dramatic. <laughs> Why is he so dramatic? I don't know. But that's, like, part of the draw. It's just yeah. so cheesy. It's amazing. Okay. And it, who who does it? Um, The guy who. Oh, why can't I think of his name? Who directs it is the same guy who does Pirates of the Caribbean. So it's like pretty, pretty good. Did you have a movie in mind for me that I think is overrated? No, I thought you were going to say Game of Thrones. No, I'm not. I haven't seen it. And that is all I will say. Okay. I have never seen it. Game of Thrones? Love a good Dothraki wedding, though. Man, Game of Thrones had just an unbelievable following. As as we all know, yeah, you don't want the Game of Thrones people going after you. I mean, I've already said like I haven't. I don't. I've already said that I don't really understand why it's so big. That being said, I have re I've admitted to myself that I will watch it at some point in my life. But the Game of Thrones hardos are quieter now since the last season played it, out the way it did. Right? They're like, oh, yeah, man. yep. And they they're a little deflated. Can you I can't be honest go with as you? Hard when the showrunners fucked you over. I was like that. so happy when that last <laughs> season did not hit. It really was. Not, I was so not happy good. that all these people had to shut up because I I had so many people being so mean to me on on the internet and I don't know I'm still I st I still am gonna watch it. The biggest proponent of me watching it is actually Sally's brother Harry. Yeah, he texts me about it like once every couple months. Dude, He's like, so, Harry dude, I think, just read I think all the, now's the all time. the books. We used to bring it up all the time on Circling Back. Like, I know, you know, Dylan. You used to talk know, about lifting he, all the he, time. Like, goes Harry out of his is. way to tell me like, hey, I think you should do this and. I don't know. I you got, I also didn't want to start it when it was happening because I knew there would be spoilers out there. I already mm -hmm. know certain spoilers. I know that someone had a wedding where like they had everything red, which I just think is so tacky. But <laughs> okay. outside of that, like I just oh, I don't gosh. know. I'm I'm gonna watch it eventually. Quarantine would have been probably the time, but I don't know. I'll well, watch it sometime. It, it's a really good show. Uh, it just ended um, weirdly. I could we could do an entire podcast on this right now. Yeah, we really could. We yeah. gotta cut it off eventually. We probably need to move on. We we covered some though. Yeah. I mean we covered a lot. Yeah. The next this next question is by our good friend Kyle Banduho, who's kind enough to respond to my tweet this morning. Oh, this is the final question that I have to read. Will he's warming the arm up in the dugout before going out for that ninth oh, inning, trying to read, see if he can get the okay. Just read the damn okay, question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If you had to use only one method of cooking, microwave, stovetop, oven, grilling, etc., for the rest of your life. What are you taking? For example, if you pick grilling, you'd have to do all your cooking, reheating, et cetera, on the grill. I'll hang up and listen. Kyle Banduho. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Can I just say, I already know what Dave would have picked. It would have been something really annoying like sous vide or something. So, <laughs> <laughs> TBH, I'm glad he's not here. <laughs> um, I think I'm going stove. Stove is the appliance I use the most in my house. Yeah. It's just... it. You can cook all, all kinds of shit. Imagine the trash person you would be if you chose a microwave. Yeah. Re the reheating situation is not ideal with but a stove. But stove, okay, so I'm going oven okay. for kind of the same reason. Because I probably use my stove in the oven the most. Like, obviously, not. we don't grill a ton because we don't have a grill. We have a grill at our apartment, but since COVID, we really haven't used it. Um. So I'm just not as well versed in the grill. I'm not saying that's a bad option. Microwave is a bad option. Do not choose that cook. option. Well, microwaves don't cook; they just heat up. <laughs> Anyone who chooses microwave, a microwave needs is to trash. Think what and also, like, think about all of the like cancerous, like, free radicals you're causing when you're microwaving something like that. Do not do that to your body. Um, I think oven is a little easier to cook and reheat, for my liking. Like, the thing that you miss with. With you, know, you take away the stove. You can't whip up eggs. You know. Fuck, you're right. You're right. Maybe it's stove. Stove is you pretty get a versatile. Fire quiche off. Yeah. I can cook a steak on a stove. I can do eggs and bacon. I do my salmon on the stove. Soup. Soups. 
Stews. Yeah, I didn't even think about soups. I'm such a soup person. Yeah. Maybe I got to go stove. I had soup for lunch today. I have a uh, toaster oven at the crib. I don't know if y'all saw it. Oh, toaster there. ovens are tight. They're tight. I, I use that thing a lot, but it's not, you know, it's not versatile like a, a stove. My oven. sister doesn't even have a microwave in her house because of that reason, Natalie, because of how dangerous they are for you. Really? Mm -hmm. So they, they heat up everything in their oven. Dude, sometimes you just got to use a microwave, though. Yeah. Sometimes you got to use a microwave. But you can you can still reheat stuff on a, sto a stove. You can, yeah. but just, sometimes you just need a microwave. It takes longer, and it's I like you have to like monitor it. And it's not as an even convenient. reheating, but I think if you do that, if you're just gonna cook with a stove for the rest of your life, you don't make anything that you can't reheat on the stove. So I'm talking that you want like a ton of chili, and you reheat it on the stove. That's easy. Yeah. But you're not making like you're not like reheating a steak hopefully ever honestly but you know i re yeah I, like micah I have... actually reheats pizza on a stove in a on cast a stove? iron really? a cast iron. Mm -hmm. that's very micah though it's so micah yeah he told me he was because they also like freeze pizza which we try to do and then we never eat it because we just order fresh pizza Who instead free, just eat it the next day yeah, I mean, I, mean I think this is actually kind of maybe a psycho move. We tried it, and then we never do it because I actually really like cold pizza. So I would oh, prefer cold pizza or just pizza left over the next day. So good. I don't reheat oh. much. Yeah, like, probably not. I like cold things. I never, I hardly ever have the need to reheat something because I like eating things cold the next day as opposed to like. So what's your what's your preferred method? Well, I'm going stove, but oven actually isn't even my number two. What's your number two? Grill. Grill. Yeah. Okay. I just love grilling stuff. And I, I mean, I don't do it very often. I'm not very good at it, but I love the taste. I mean, if it's the thing that I do for the rest of my life, best believe I'm going to get pretty good at grilling. Well, yeah, you'd be good at it. And there are a lot, like you can pretty much make anything on a grill because a you're, it's a essentially a stove. Right. It's just, you can use it. Yeah. You know, but, but you're you probably, a little, flavor yeah, like you get a little more and flavor. It'd just be great. And an oven's great and all, but like, if I don't eat turkey for the rest of my life, there's no skin off my back. Grill is the hard-o answer to this. Grill is what Dave would have answered. <laughs> no, Dave would have smoked everything. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave needs to reheat no. something. He's like, nope, fired up. It'll be ready in four hours, babe. Yeah. Hope you're not grill is right the hard-o answer. I just like don't – I guess if I had to only grill for the rest of my life, I'd get really good at it. But one, I'm not good at it. And two, it's just like a lot of effort. Have you, you know? seen the freaking steaks I've been making on my like Caster? crappy stove lately? Dude, I'm just getting steaks off constantly. That's how I make. I I did a ribeye last night mm -hmm. on a cast stove iron? top. Yep, cast yep, iron. Delightful, phenomenal. Why don't you it's send so a, why good. Why don't you send a gut shot to the squad? I don't want to get judged. After we figured out how to actually make a cast iron steak, thank you to all the listeners who sent me tips. We actually just watched a Gordon Ramsay video and it helped immensely. <laughs> but I've I have, I don't even do that method anymore, Sally. Even I know. If I'm, even if I'm super proud of the steak I just cooked, I, I'm afraid to show it to people. Yeah, I almost dropped one in the group text the other day, but I was a little worried, so it, I, just, I sent it directly to Dave. It tastes phenomenal to me, and that's that's what really matters. That's what counts. Do you want to know how I've been doing a strip lately so well? It's, it's been, worked every time. I've done it three times now, and it's been perfect. Okay? You get a cast iron, heat it up real hot, do the fat cap for one minute, turn it over onto its, like, whatever, flat side, 345, flip it again, start basing that thing with a bunch of rosemary and butter and garlic. Oh, shit. Then you flip it w one last time for one minute. So you do one, 345, 345, one on the other side. So you'd grill all four sides. Okay. Take it out, wrap it in foil for 10 minutes. Enjoy. Wow. I found some random dude on YouTube, and yeah, I, I was like, you know what? This looks good. I did it, and it has worked perfect. I don't get wild with it like that. I just get uh, – well, I make sure I get a good piece of meat, and I just do salt and pepper, and then uh, heat up some – put a little, little bit of olive oil on the – on the cast iron, get it crazy hot, and do like uh, four and a half minutes on each side. Yeah. And I've it's been, really good. I've been really enjoying the rosemary. Will's been basting his ass off. Oh, my God. Just Big basting. Baster. I think that that's the key. Okay. So you don't dry it out. You just baste. Okay. So basted right now. Let's <laughs> uh, so the last one. Voicemail. No one's going to congratulate me on the perfect game of reading questions. or Congrats. Thank you. You did a great job, Thank Will. Thank you. Going to Disney World. Here's the last one. Hey, gang. George from Florida here uh, calling from vacation. Um, what are your thoughts on working out while on vacation? Is it a trash move or should you just relax? 
Appreciate it. Shouts to George from Florida. Longtime follower. You think he's in Florida on vacation too? I don't think so. I think he just lives there. Okay. Because I I think his username on like No, I was just like wondering if he like was also in Florida. Could be. Maybe he just went Um, to Key West or something. I do think it is a trash move, but I'm not above doing it. I agree. I I will do it. Um, I don't like to take, it depends on how long the vacation, if it's three days, no, I'm not going to do it. If it's five, I probably will find my way to the gym at some point. Well, okay. I think it's location specific. Okay. Uh If you're going to like a nice resort, you're going to be there for a week. They have a tight workout facility. Bring your tennis shoes, work out. If you're going to Italy and like going to be walking around, you know, the Amalfi coast, no, you don't have to work out. Okay. All you have to do is like hike your ass everywhere and that's going to count because you're going to be so stressed out bringing all your shit to Italy so you can work out when you really could just like walk around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if it's a, if it's a, um, trip where you're going to be doing a lot of sightseeing or like when we went to London in Scotland, like we walked all over the place and we were gone for a long time. And yes, I did gain some weight on that trip. I didn't gain an ounce cause it's cause we walked, but we so walked much. so much. And I was like, I'm not going to like stress myself out. But if I think like a beach, yes, you can work out, and I don't think it's trash. Yeah, especially because you want to look tight, right. at the beach. Exactly. Like you work out in preparation for the trip, and you get there, you're like, I don't want to stop now. I'm trying to look dope out here. But I think I think either way, like either go and relax, do your thing, and enjoy your all inclusive resort in Mexico, or go and like do it in the morning, and don't let anybody shame you for doing it. So you're you the you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But. Yeah, I agree. If I'm going on like a long beach vacation, I'm going to try. And normally I bring shoes, do it one time, and then I never do it the rest of the trip. Here's a key to me, though. Don't let your workout interrupt like the day's activities. Right. Don't hold up other people on your vacation. Like, oh, I got to go to the gym first or whatever. Just fit it in in downtime. Right. Just go go with the flow. Yeah, you like, can't don't, be... don't miss like prime beach hours because you want to go get a pump in. To me, I'm it's like, stupid. do it in the morning, get it over with, but don't like delay a day trip. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh, can't go on this like also, sightseeing tour because I'm doing a. Get whatever. up and go for a run on the beach. That's tight. Yeah. You don't get to do that every day. I sure don't. I've never worked out on vacation before because I've only worked out for about two total years of my life. <laughs> but. The way that I look at it now is that the only way that I will work out on vacation is if I'm at a resort Mm -hmm. where they have like a very nice workout room and it's right there. It's one of the amenities. I like getting my money's worth. And if it's a family vacation versus one with a bunch of friends, if there's one with a bunch of friends, you're more likely to be hungover, tired, kind of a little doing stuff. When it's a family vacation, I don't care who your family is. You could probably use a little me time and going and doing that. Right. And so if it's like a resort vacation where like the, the prime activity of the day is laying by the pool, then go get a workout in. Who yeah. cares? R- stroll up to the pool. But if you're actually like doing stuff, like if you're, if you go to like a bachelor party and you're like trying to work out or something, like shut up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, like, can't you can't be, be doing, doing that. that. No. You're, yeah. You're a douche if you do that. When we were in Michigan, like I, I considered golfing my workout every day. Yeah. We walked Rosie every day. I didn't try to do anything extra. Even if you ride in a cart, you still get a lot of steps in playing golf. I mean, since I got the whoop, I've been tracking my activity playing golf and it's a, it's a decent workout. Yeah. It, it's enough that I don't need to do anything for the rest of the day because my body has done enough. Mm -hmm. What's so weird is like you said, the bachelor party thing, girls are such the opposite. Like you, if you don't bring workout clothes, you're like shamed because you all do yoga. Now it's like, we got to do a hike and then we have to do this like group yoga class and we have, everyone has to be matching outfits and i'm like it's because everyone's trying to outdo each other freaking and like, work out on your stupid bachelorette party and it's because the bride doesn't want to get fat in the three days she's there so i think it's gotta, because y'all just tell each other you work out more than you actually do and so then when you get there it's like oh i need to work out yeah. <laughs> I, I hate you guys out. actually schedule classes and stuff like yeah you do spin classes in vegas for yeah. like lily's bachelorette yep. party oh gosh you'll do yoga classes you'll someone, do whatever if someone proposed that for a bachelor party like that guy would just get like shamed into oblivion like what are you talking about what dude you don't have like a i was gonna have a bench press competition at mine <laughs> it's gonna be sick oh gosh i was gonna do a full combine that would actually that actually might be fun it would. some i mean people no, would get but injured would, like, but it'd be really carry fun. your acl so mm-hmm. that's not a good idea 
Tell uh, me it wouldn't be a blast. I'll go ahead and say it. That was a good episode. It was, that was a great episode. You know what? We all were kind of in bad moods, and by all I mean you and me, Dylan, and uh, I feel like we turned it around. I think we did fantastic. Thanks. I think the results will show that. I agree. The hotline number, 888-362-6245. You can also write in at the link in our Twitter bio, at Malin Podcast. Did you guys have fun? I had a great time. Always. Well, good. Always. All right, guys. Thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>